Welcome everybody to NHL 19 franchise mode. I am super, super, super excited to see where we can take this franchise mode. I've been really debating about who I wanted to be, what team I wanted to take to the promised land that is the Stanley Cup championship. And you know, I've been thinking I, I've had, I'm the one that's gonna just throw this out there and I'm gonna get a ton of comments I think about this. Early season, anticipation is huge. I'm going to make a very bold statement and say that I think either Buffalo and or Carolina will make the 2019 playoffs. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments below, but I am not going to choose either of those two teams. I am going to choose a custom-made team, the Milwaukee Misfits. Yes, it is the business name of which I own. It is also something that I think needs to happen in the great city of Milwaukee with the opening of the Pfizer Forum recently, which I was able to go shoot for the business, which is huge. It's time we bring a professional NHL level team to this amazing city. We have the Milwaukee Admirals. I have no grief about that whatsoever, but we need an NHL team. The Bradley Center was built to bring NHL hockey to Milwaukee and it did not. So now it is up to the Pfizer Forum to do that very task. I'm gonna leave the Burnaby Aces in. We'll leave some neclectic NHL 18 cents to this franchise mode as the AHL team. But this is gonna be a very interesting thing. I wanted to just create a team and I went through all the headwork of creating a team, the arena, all of that. And I want to just wipe the plate, get a new fresh start, and we are going to really experience what this is going to be. So, Hopefully I chose the right option here because last time it was not and it was really, really weird. So let's see exactly what expansion draft we get to see because last time it was not the updated rosters and I don't want that at all. So let's go over to Pittsburgh and if I see Tenorti, I know that I didn't do it right again, but I seem to be okay. So if I see Tenorti on Nashville, then I should be good. Because I want to do custom rosters so that it was updated because there were some on the default roster where the moves had not yet been made in most cases. So I see Irwin, I see Tenorti. Okay, so I am good to go here. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to move forward with this. I am going to be taking you through the expansion draft. I will put timestamps in the description for those that want to skip a lot of this. You are more than welcome to, but I'm going to go through the process of how I'm feeling, what exactly I'm building my team to be. I actually really like Gibbons as a first choice from Anaheim. I'm really excited to bring him on to the Milwaukee Misfits. There are not a lot of players there. Darcy Kemper, I do like. Oh, excuse me, Darcy Kemper. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan. Always have been ever since he was a king, even before those days. I believe he was a Minnesota Wild goaltender before then, and he had huge, huge, huge hopes as a Minnesota Wild prospect. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. Adam McQuaid, I'm not really liking the options that Boston is throwing my way. I also noticed that there's a lot less options here, so this might be a little bit of an interesting thing. But I'm a fan of building from youth. Any of my favorite teams in any sport, any franchise, anywhere. I don't know if I want Wilson in this case. Doesn't look like I have much options. I don't want to stack too high in defensive yet. I also like building Yun as I was getting into. I've always appreciated teams that draft and build from within. That's why I'm, I'm a Packers fan, not just because I'm in Wisconsin. I mean, my favorite team is the Steelers because of Jerome Bettis, obviously. And here again, Girozano. So I did some testing, and every time, no matter what roster selection I had, Giordano was available. Now, I'm not sure if that's something that they're going to fix in the future or what, but I'm not going to pass up taking Mark Giordano, guys. Like, are you kidding me? Moving forward, though, Carolina Hurricanes have a lot of good prospects, a lot of good young guys. Like I said, my bold prediction, either the Sabres or the Hurricanes will make the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. Man, oh man, I hope to see one of those teams succeed. I think that both of them deserve it very, very much, and we'll see what happens. But Chicago Blackhawks do not have many options. I will take Manning in this case. Building from youth, we're going to have a, a young team, I hope, a team that we can really just 
build together, get that chemistry, even though I have chemistry off because it's a big time waste. I'm going to leave Fog of War on and we're going to see how badly I fall on my face for that. It'll be pretty interesting. I need to start building my offensive side of things though, which is very hard to do. I'll show you how many great defensemen there are, but we can get Boone Jenner, great two way forward here. I think that's a good choice. Get our left wing position filled out. I'm going to take Marty Hansel. I think I, I've always been a fan of Marty Hansel. I think he's a great, great bottom six guy. I think that it fits his bill right there perfectly. And I think that it's a very good selection here. Martin Furk, I'm going to see that he's back, back to reality a little bit. I think after the, the big roster change last year, they brought him up a little bit higher than, than I think he needed to be, but we'll take I don't know even how to pronounce these names. Wemple, I could be wrong. I'm bad with names. You're going to learn that very, very quickly. I will gladly take Adam Larson here. Florida, who you got? Let's see. McGinn, Brower, Haley. See, now I don't necessarily want to be a roughhousing team, so I'm not going to take a guy like Haley, but I think we need to... Uh... See, now I could take... I want to build Young, and I don't necessarily want to just get a whole bunch of contracts. I don't necessarily want to get anybody that I doubt will sign. Here's a good two-way defender. Gives us extra depth on defense. I agree with that. I think I'm just going to take that choice. I'm going to probably have to come back and change a lot of the a lot of the selections that I do make for defensemen because I probably will fill out. I do like Alec Martinez here more than Forbert. I'm going to take Alec. Not just because of overall. I'm not going simply best overall. That's not how I play. I like young prospects like Olofsson here. I am definitely all about that. Montreal, no Feli Deno. Are we going to have Feli Deno? No, we're not. NHL 18 fans know that was probably your pick when you expansion drafted from Montreal. In most cases, uh, I could take Ouellette. I could take Placanitz just to get that depth in the center position. I'm not guaranteed that he'll sign. I'm not guaranteed that Olette will sign either. Uh, what do they have back up? Antti Niemi, overall 74. That's probably more accurate. I'll take Placanitz. We'll see if we can sign, sign him on and give him a few turtlenecks to stay with the Milwaukee Misfits. As I say, I just love... I love building from within. I love these prospects. I love the young guys, especially young guys with a low top four potential that puts, what, top six, AHL top two. I mean, it could go pretty bad, but it also, at the same rate, could go pretty good. Definitely taking Fost in this situation. See, now I'm starting to get more of these other positions developed a little bit. I could take Watts here. I'm a huge fan. I could take Yarncrook. That's a very safe contract, and I, I've always been a fan of Kelly Yarncrook. I think he's a great two-way player. Although it has him listed as a sniper, I've never really seen that from. Especially, I mean, as in Milwaukee days, he was pretty, he was a pretty good sniper. Oh, excuse my sniffling. It is early in the morning, and I want to get this video out, but I have year-long allergies that kick my butt early in the morning. I don't see now. This is going to be a tough one. I could take a goalie here just to fill that slot. Keith Kincaid is actually a really good selection. I think that's a, I think that's the way to go. I really truly do. I'm not going to fall victim to the Gabrick curse. As much as I'm a fan of Gabrick, I just know that it's probably not going to work out. I'm curious why he has 77 overall as an AHL top six prospect. Um, but that might actually be... No, we'll take Pyatt. We'll see if we can't sign him back. Moving forward, Philadelphia. We've got probably some options in the goaltender position. We could take Neuwirth. I'm not exactly sure if I want to do that. I like Wheel here. I think building Yun. Building down the middle, you got to be strong down the middle. You really, really do have to be strong. Here we'll take Dumoulin. I know I'm going to have to probably go back on some defensemen. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I can stay where I'm at and keep a lot of these guys. Good row, I think, is a great selection here. Hopefully we can sign him long term. Power forward, we need one of those on the left side, I think. Top six defensemen. I do need some more goaltending. I don't necessarily want Chad Johnson. Uh, let's see, Patrick Maroon, Jaskin. Oh, here we go. Check this out. Check this out. Sungvist. Sungvist. I'm so bad with names, I swear. Oscar. We're gonna we're gonna anticipate signing him for a pretty long deal, I believe. Hopefully we can. Yanni Gord. 
See, now we're getting now we're getting in some good places here. Two way forward, undrafted. How did he go undrafted? My goodness. We're gonna be a little bit deep in the left wing, but that's okay. We gotta find some right wings. We gotta find some goaltenders. Uh, we could take Juris here. Bottom six overall depth forward, two way. Could develop into a good bottom six player for us. Let's see what they have for goaltenders. We could take Curdy Mack. We could take Calvin Pickard. That actually might not be a bad selection. Fridge starter, you never know. That could become a starter. I've always been a fan of Calvin Pickard's development. I hope that he does eventually one day develop. I was hoping that his brother, Chet, would do the same, but unfortunately that did not work out. As do some things, though. That is the nature of the beast. Brendan Gauntz. Sniper. I'm a huge fan of snipers. I am going to take that selection. Yun, building from within. I know that I need to keep building from the, the center position, as I keep saying. We could take Connolly. Actually, I think I'm going to take Connolly. As much as I want. No, we'll take Juice. Have to take Juice here. I'd rather go back and change another defenseman to a bottom six wing if I have to. Uh, Lippin, though. Lippin's a good selection, I think, for a good right wing playmaker. That could develop into something that I need. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, I am okay with what we have here. I think that this is a very, very solid start to the Milwaukee Misfits franchise. Giordano is going to be our key piece. Uh, let's see if they let us do it. It looks like we're going to be okay. It looks like we're going to be okay. So, this is our Milwaukee Misfits team. Let us sim to the draft. Let us go through the draft. See, uh, oh, I probably should have edited the draft or the trading block. Let's do the trading block. Let's see who we have that we can trade in depth. I'm glad that it gives me the good options that I like. So obviously I have a lot of defensemen. I like putting a few of them on the block. You never know what you can get in return. Like I could put a guy like Martinez on the block, I think. I don't necessarily need a guy like Martinez. I have Giordano, I have Larson, I have Ulofsson. I have so many defensive prospects. I could even put Manning on the block, I think. I, I could get some good value for. Even a guy like McQuaid I could put on the block. Pyatt has a fairly high uh, trade value, I feel, for his skill. But I think let's just go with this. We'll put these guys on the block. And we'll see what we can get in return as this draft goes. We are obviously a building team. We are probably not going to replicate what the Vegas Golden Knights did last year as much as I hope so. Um, we'll see what happens, though. So I'm going to send the user pick. We'll see what we get. We have uh, a lot of... Ooh. Okay, so this, is, this seems to be not necessarily straight from this year's pick unless it's for next season and i just don't know the names of the prospects so here is where we're going to have to learn the fog of war so here's a very high highly rated very accurate potential for brayden myers power forward we've got his strengths and his weaknesses very 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 well scouted uh, Theo Fleury style takes winning seriously. He has incredible drive to win. Loyalty is a concern, though, which may or may not be a good thing moving forward. We know that he's a type of a two-way forward here for Rodine. Shot utilization and teammate utilization. Okay, so he's a little bit selfish. Nothing to report. Potential medium elite, possibly. Uh, I mean, you know, that's so hard to tell especially with this i almost think that a guy like brayden myers might just be what we need that power up the middle especially if he's got a theo Fleury like style teammate utilization is a weakness here as well but a, he has a reach issue as well it's 6-1 but he protects the puck well he has great offensive instincts like a good release on a power forward could be like rick nash as well so i'm gonna just take myers i think and we'll see hopefully that works out in our favor like i said i'm totally new to the why does the trade look at the message center why does the message center say welcome mark giordano flames to the trade block when i selected him in the expansion draft nhl 19 you do still have some things to work out but that is okay okay here we go medium elite nathan dunkley hmm this is okay so this is going to be really interesting so we have a lot of low guesses and random guesses with like a bunch of elites but how accurate are they so here's a goaltender with a two medium elite 
this is going to be cool. I'm going to I'm going to take Dunkley here. Leadership ability, which is good. Nothing to report. I mean, this is totally a shot in the dark, but I need to build that center depth so we can see how that works. I mean, this is all this is all going to be new to me. So we'll have to see what happens. I'm going to trade down. I need picks. I need prospects. I'm going to accept this, get a pick for next year, move down very, very so slightly this year, and see what happens in that regard. So inaccurate, very inaccurate, unknown. Boy, this is going to be interesting. Here's a low elite defenseman. This could be interesting. We're very high on the rank that oh, I forget which one is CS and which one is... So central scouting, and then I don't know what SC is. If that's just like a general scouting rank, perhaps. Oh, we've got Lundmark too, though. But his, ooh, okay, so this is interesting. Let's see if what we have on these guys. So not a lot here. He's got bad foot speed, potentially. What about Ilya here? Defensive defenseman, he's got good character, he's got good reach, which we could use for a defenseman. Would mesh in any locker room, has a very well-rounded personality. We could use a guy like this, I think, moving forward. He could be a guy that we could develop. Like I said, I'm very curious to see how the Fog of War system works. I know that I have to put them in my roster for the preseason in order to get a lot of that out. I'm surprised I haven't gotten any trade offers for the guys that I have on the block. But that's what we have to deal with, I guess. Let's try sorting by potential. I'm curious if there's like... A, Anybody that we have some good scouting on, like here, Nikolai Joss, sniper. This could be a potentially good pick, I think. A, a top six low potential, fairly, fairly accurate on that guess. So I say we just make this pick and see what happens. You never know what you're going to run into when you don't expect it. There's a lot of, I mean, you look at NHL 18, the low... 5th, 6th, 7th round, low top 9s or low top 6s defenseman-wise that you had that turned into low elites. You never know what you're going to find. Like Grossman here. Here's a two-way defenseman that you never know what he's going to be. He could be not exactly that at all. But here's a semi-inaccurate left wing top 9 two-way forward i believe playmaker so they so the type is even something that they're not sure about but he's got quickness he's got yeah i'm i'm gonna be okay with this pick i feel if he's got quickness good character that's something that we could use in the locker room even though again i'm not playing with morale but heck i still like a guy with good character right so let's see okay so here's a two bar right wing low top six low on sniper Again, I think I'm just going to take this pick. I've got a lot of defensemen. None of them seem to want to be traded anytime soon. I'm actually going to offer a trade, I think. Let's try seeing what we can't get. And since I have... Okay, so I need to hurry up here then because I need to call a timeout. This is not all what I wanted. Hold on. Hold on. I got to call a timeout. Call a timeout. Because I need some time to develop this trade, I think. Whoops, that's not all that I wanted. I need to offer a trade. I'm going to call two timeouts here. If it gives me more time, you never know. Let's see if we can trade a guy like Alec Martinez. Let's see what we can get for Alec Martinez here. He's got a pretty good trade value. Let's find a team that wants him. I don't trust sending him to a rebuilding team. I could, however, trade him to like a potential contender. Or even a hopeful if they want one. So like here, Columbus. They lost Jack Johnson to Pittsburgh. So maybe they have something, some desire to get rid of or to get somebody back like uh, like uh, Alec Martinez. Is there anything that we could use from their roster? I don't want to give away a prospect. Let's see what they're looking to trade. Carlson, a low top four, but a very high rated low top four. We could take... A guy like Carlson and then maybe some draft picks like uh, next year's first round perhaps and we could even I mean if they want to trade that we could get let's just see if this goes through as is rejected too far off okay so I could even trade up I could give my seventh this year and maybe like a fourth for next year perhaps let's see if they go with this still too far off that's okay that's okay I don't, 
I don't know if, uh, let's try a third. So this is accepted. So welcome to the squad, Carlson. It was nice knowing you, Martinez. I am a huge fan. You won the cup for us against the Rangers, as I am. My favorite team is the LA Kings. I just appreciate Nashville as well due to Milwaukee being the AHL squad in my area that works with the Nashville Predators. So those are my two top teams. Incoming hate in the comments section. I can feel it already, but welcome to the squad, all of my draft picks. I thought that I'd get some trade offers. I'm going to keep everybody on the block that was on the block. We're going to go through the re-sign phase, see how this looks, and move forward into next season. This video, we're going to play with how you guys like and perceive the the length of the videos and the format of the videos. If you're familiar with any other NHL 18 or any other NHL GM mode YouTuber, we're going to go something very similar to that style. I'm going to try and fancify it and take it to the next level, obviously, but this is my first stab at something like this. I want to get this out day one of the three-day pre-release for those that did pre-order, and I want to show just how much of a how much of a bullish attitude I have about NHL GM strategy. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. I have a lot of good lot of good ideas in the back of my head. I'm glad that they're letting a lot of these players want to sign with the Milwaukee Misfits last year for any expansion team that you made. Like it just seemed to me like nobody wanted to sign. And it was so hard to get people to stay on the team. You could draft, you know, anybody in the expansion draft, it basically became something where you really just took whoever had more than one year on their contract because you were never sure whether or not they wanted to stay. So like I got a guy like Carlson and yeah, he's totally had an expiring contract, but he still wants to re-sign with the Milwaukee Misfits. I don't blame him. I would want to sign as well. It's a great new arena that, I mean, theoretically, yes, it's a new arena as well in here, but we actually just built a new arena with the Pfizer Forum, and I'm really excited to see how that works. I did not call it the Pfizer Forum in the game. I wanted to make something cool, so I called it the Misfits Arena. Yeah, I know that's not cool, but I made it. It is what it is. That is where the Milwaukee Misfits will be playing this season and moving forward. And we'll see if there are options to potentially change that in the future. I had a lot of contracts that were expiring. My goodness. I am very shocked. I know that I should be looking for more of this and actually going through and really picking apart these contracts. But for year one, I saw a lot of very low years. So as we rebuild this team, I think I can really look toward adding more in that regard, but for what we have right now, I'm very much okay with this. We'll look to free agency to see exactly what we have and what we need, what our needs are, and yeah, we'll kind of hopefully get through the preseason in this video and see exactly what that fog of war looks like a little bit. I really want to show a lot of these new features in this franchise mode for those that are thinking about either getting the game themselves or have the game themselves and aren't going to do fog of war. Maybe I can show you a little bit more about how it works, what it does, and all of the likes. So I think I've got everybody re-signed moving forward. Giordano's my worst contract. Martin Hansel's my second worst contract, which, I mean, potentially I could just have Martin Hansel for one year. We'll see exactly how that works and how uh, how our team looks. I, I usually will go into the trade options and see exactly what I have in each position Oh, excuse me. And go from there. I think we still... Okay, so I don't need Giordano on the trade block anymore. I think I could go with probably... I have Manning. I have... All right, so let's see if there's any, like... I could put Pyatt on there. I could put Barbario. I think I'm going to do that. 21... Or I'm sorry, 28 years old. 1.45 contract. That's a very team-friendly contract. If they just need a guy to fill in somewhere during the season, let's check out the free agent market and see exactly who we have available. Blake Wheeler, so this is definitely next year's then. Okay, so I don't want to make a lot of moves. I don't want to just completely overpower this team, but if I can sign, I mean, I have the cast space to sign both of these. I'm not going to just sign everybody. I don't think that that's necessarily fair. 
I think that a lot of these guys, even though it says that there's no teams interested, will find themselves back on their original teams. I hope. I hope that that's how they sim with this game. I do know that I need some depth down the middle. I'm not a fan of Grandpa Thornton. I've never been a fan of Grandpa Thornton, but that's also because I'm a Canes fan, and I've always disliked the Sharks, and Bruins are also my least favorite Eastern Conference team, and he came from Boston, so yeah, he just doesn't ever, never really sat well with me. But a guy like Silverberg here could be a really good start to the franchise, and I think this might be a good selection. Very good puck skills, pretty good senses, great like actually overall his shooting is like the accuracy on his shot is impressive so i'm going to offer jakob silverberg a contract let's try and get him for five five for two years and see what happens there what about goaltenders i know i need a few more depth goaltenders so like if we find Karop, for example let's see if we can't maybe build from within a little bit if somebody does really well we can bring somebody up I don't necessarily want just like a bunch of guys that are going to sit and retire soon in my in my farm system. Now, I like the fact that the Fog of War also affects the overall. So like here, I'm not exactly accurate on Dismiss overall, but he could be a backup. He's pretty young, so I'm going to just throw him down in the minors and see what happens. 26 years of age only. Y you never really know what can happen there. And I think that's the beauty of this. I think that's why I'm really excited about this franchise mode because it's way beyond anything that I've ever dealt with before, especially with NHL 18. I had it pretty cut and dry. So I got Jakob Silverberg. So far, all of my signs are going through. Barbario for a fourth round pick. I'm going to take it because I think that I've got plenty of defensemen to use this upcoming season, and I really want to just get a bunch of picks for next year and be able to have that flexibility depending upon how I learn the fog of war, how I see it working, if I need to just add more to my roster, get more prospects in. I know I'll need to start drafting goaltenders pretty soon here so I can start developing my own goaltending prospects. So we'll see how this looks and we'll see how this happens It'll be very interesting to see exactly what works. And I'm surprised that Barbario, of all the guys that I had on the block, were, was the one that actually was selected to be traded. The Leafs want Placanitz back. I don't know if I want to give him back only for a third round. I'm not exactly sure about that, guys. I think that I can keep him. Let me look at how deep I am in the center position and if he would really, really even be a key member of this Milwaukee Misfits team in year one. So I do definitely need the planets. I'm surprised Marty, why is Marty Hansel in the AHL? Why is he in Burnaby right now, you guys? I'm not sure about that at all, but the good news is we have these guys to try out. Maybe one of them is better than I anticipate. And I believe I got Dunkley in the first round, if I'm not mistaken. So second round. So either way, Myers, I think I took first round. Yeah. So I have two high picks that could potentially be that fourth line center. I mean, we'll see, but I definitely don't feel like I'm deep enough in the center position to let a guy like that go. In fact, I probably should sign a few centermen just in case, and I'm obviously going to need to be filling out the AHL roster as well. So I should probably do a little bit more in that regard. Here's no sec, but I don't necessarily want to take on any restricted free agents. There's a lot of restricted guys here. So let's just look straight up centerman and see exactly how we can. So I have follow. Okay, now we're talking. I do want a guy like this developing in my roster. I'm okay giving up. Okay, I don't have that pick anyway. So that's just going to have to be the case. Do we have any like Yun? So Paquette could be a good selection. We can sign him. Uh, let's see who we have. Matt Stajan could be a good veteran. You never really know. Nick Dowd I could take. I think he's a two-way deal, yeah, but that's okay. You never know. That could work out. He could be a call-up if we need him in due time. I think that that'll probably do for now, though. I just kind of want a few just to get myself started. We'll get a guy just to sign for the AHL roster as well. Just grab a couple here. Five, six potential checking. Just a veteran just to throw in that line down in the minors. Schroeder would be another good centerman for the minor leagues, but I don't necessarily know if I need to overdo it. I think what we have here is good. Is this Chris Miller? Is it? Day and former Rocky Admiral Chris Miller. I love looking at these nostalgic moments of like, oh yeah, I remember seeing him play in 
you know, whatever team you, you're local to, and all of a sudden you see him in the free agent market, and you're like, yeah, I wonder what happened to that guy, and what, what they perceive his overall to be in this day and age. Nick Dow rejected going to the Nashville Predators like they need any more center depth. My goodness, that's okay. That's okay. We'll be okay. We got Paquette. We got the, uh, I forget the other guy's name. I kind of just selected somebody at random to some extent, but that's okay. We're going to go straight into the preseason, and we're going to select our lines. Now, for the Fog of War feature, the way that you select your lines determines what Fog of War options go. So, like, I need to bring in my centerman from... Okay, so I need to... I don't know how this is going to work. I need to bring in, is this, all right, so Myers, so I need Myers, I have Myers on, the, okay, so I need to bring him in, but, okay, so maybe it, maybe it works with both, since it is a, I mean, I do have control of him in the AHL as well. I don't know why it has Marty Hansel down there. Okay, so as long as Myers and uh, da, 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 da. who was my other selection? No. Also no. Where is so I it wasn't Granstrom. Granstrom was a free agent I just signed. Unless he just went down to the CHL, which is entirely possible. More than likely, what happened, but. I'm okay with this. I think that as long as I have no obvious like mistakes in terms of so I did select Jazz, so I do want Jazz in. That's a definite. Let's put him on that top line. I'm just gonna throw these guys on the top line. I don't like I said, this is gonna be a learning experience of how the fog of war works, so forgive me. But I wanna make sure that the guys that I drafted are being represented here in this roster so i want to make sure that everybody that i drafted i'm getting the fog of war from and i'm able to see exactly what they are so i'm just going to let that go i think that's good we should be able to see more so what that is based on the fog of war after the preseason so we should have a little bit more knowledge about them so as far as i know Central scouting, or currently scouting, no. Okay, so I need to get all of my scouts out there. Scout team lines. Okay, so this is just for, uh, is this gonna be also a new thing? The scouting system has changed very, very dramatically. So I want to just select a group of players here, I think, to scout quick entire division i want the yeah i want i want my guys this year to just get a general report as to what exactly is happening around the the league so i'm just gonna let all of this work for the full season and we're just gonna see what happens obviously this might change as well but We'll see what happens. I mean, this is this is super exciting. Like, I'm I'm very intrigued to see what exactly this is. So I'm going to fast forward past this part, and then I will meet you on the other side once I've selected all of my scouts. All right. So now we have every scout set to go take their mission. We can come back as the season progresses and make changes as we see fit. I kind of have everybody just on a very general assignment right now just so that we can start to scout people and scout players and get prospects that we at least have some knowledge on so that during the next few drafts we can draft smart draft big draft wide and be able to really build this team up obviously we have a very strong team i feel led by probably mark giordano in terms of point production as well you don't really have a lot of big big point producers on the top and the forwards lines but a guy like mark giordano supporting the back end is really going to help i think the rest of the team develops strong so i'm very 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 pleased with getting that 
it's you know getting that addition to the team and being able to do that we're definitely going to be simming a lot i do to an extent want to play the first game which i think i'm going to do here i like simming through the preseason let's take a look at our lines and see if we learned anything about our prospects that we drafted within the hl level so you see marty hansel got brought up let's see we have myers who's a 65 overall centerman Still a medium top six potential, but that's good. We're learning more about him as he builds with this team, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, where is, I believe we selected a left wing as well. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Undrafted. Fifth round, Rocky Misfits. So I do want all of my draft picks to become members of the squad, and I want them all to be represented on the ice jazz i know is our other player that we wanted to keep going even though he's a 48 overall he's got that low top six potential potentially that's a very high high guess for what i anticipated especially as a 48 overall but i'm okay with that selection and letting that develop you just never know so here's another selection by the Rocky Misfits. I want all of my prospects to build. I'm surprised why they have, why is Gauntz all the way in my AHL level? Is he actually an 81 overall? That's kind of a guess it looks like, but a Vancouver Canucks prospect nonetheless. We can, I guess we'll just leave him here for now and we'll see exactly how that develops. Again, I'm very interested to see how this works moving forward and how it looks. But for those that want to see my great, great, great gameplay, in fact, I think we're just going to sim this. We're going to go into a very in-depth simulation. Ah, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play it as I normally do. I always, always, always play the first game of my NHL seasons. I think it's a great way to see exactly how your team is looking. As you can see, my jerseys maybe aren't the most interesting. I could probably change that. They looked a lot cooler before I saw them next to a team that actually had a jersey. My jersey creation skills are definitely not up to par. But we are moving in to game number one of the regular season with the Milwaukee Misfits taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. Last year's Stanley Cup Western Conference matchup with the Washington Capitals. So here we go moving in. I just played on pro general. Everything stays the same after that. I know it's probably, I probably could bump it up a little bit, but we got to get first goal as a Milwaukee misfit. Our sign on Jakob Silverberg. What a great addition that turns out to be. What a great score that was. Very good puck movement there. That's maybe why I should bump up the difficulty, but we will have to see what you guys think in the comments. I do very much like, from what I've played so far, the new physics of the game. I think the hits are a lot better. I think that skating is a lot cleaner. Uh, we have to get back end here. Can I? It's still... Oh, 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 gosh, Marcia. So, not tonight. Not tonight. Bring that puck up, Yanni Gord. Get that dump in. Flurry with the save. Oh, I like how the goalie's, like... Bring the puck out. I like that so much more than just every five seconds there was a freaking face-off. I, may, I know it's not the right thing for the goalie to always bring out of the glove, but I like it a lot better that way. Placanitz, backhand. Oh, Yachty Gore gets in there, but gets stuffed by Marc-Andre Fleury. Tuck gets decked by... Oh, that's icing. That's my fault. Can I still... Yes, I can still push people after the whistle. Good. Good, good, good. Placanitz is tired out there, though. Maybe not. Why is... I thought he was... Is he not my first line center? I should know this information. I feel bad for not knowing this information. Oh my gosh, that was a tight. Uh, la, la, la. Kincaid is my starting goalie. Oh my gosh, we're going to have to build a lot. Why did... Uh, that's not where I passed it. That pass, that pass. There's nobody on the back door right now. I'm kind of actually shocked. But it allows Yeti Gordon to break it up. Get that line change. Get fast out on that puck. Why is... Come on, you guys. Just change the lines. Boo! <laughs> Larson with the big hit. Giordano with the protection on Kincaid. Oh, my goodness. What a hit. Adam Larson. Oh, and unsus... Oh, jeez. Kelly Arkwright gets laid out. Fast comes in to try and save him. Not so much. Colin Miller's a, a tough guy to take down. Stasny. Oh, my goodness gracious. That was close. I thought he was coming in hot. All right. And McQuaid. Oh, that was my fa uh, blah, blah, blah. my bad. That was my bad. 
I'll take full blame for that. Full blame for that. Keith Kincaid so far is a solid rock in the goal. What a beautiful selection that was. Ryan Reeves, why? What line is this? Are you seriously in your fourth line right now, Vegas? Come on, take it up, Scott Wilson. Big shot. That was actually a really good shot. Yes, Van Riemsdyk. Oh, read that play. Read that play, Van Riemsdyk. Get back, Wilson. Peary. Is that Brandon Peary? When did he get signed on? I like that selection. Oh, Pyatt. Oh, no, no, no. Van Riemsdyk. I got to play more realistically. My my NHL 18 GM modes off camera did not. Oh, Ryan Reeves. How do you take down a man like Ryan Reeves like that? Yeah, I, that could have probably been a bit of a dirty hit there. We'll have to maybe see if that gets replayed in between whistles. I'm surprised. I like this hit mechanic so far. It's actually a lot more realistic. The skating mechanics are a lot more smooth. I'm very much liking this so far, Ryan Reeves. You're not getting that back door. Not going to let you sniff that out, though. Pie it. Backhand. Why? you got to switch to the forehand, though. Oh, my gosh. This guy <laughs> Oh, man. I like that so much. I like that so much because it's able. they're able to take just... I ran into that player, whoever that was. That might have been Reeves for all I know. And I got laid out. And it wasn't necessarily like a penalized hit. It was just I ran into the guy. He was a brick wall. It was my mistake for skating into him. And I paid the price. I like that about this game. Mark Giordano closing the door on that dump. I'm not letting anybody get a, a dump and chase game playing on the Milwaukee Misfits. That's for sure. Jakob Silverberg trying for number two. Not getting it today. But he's getting this puck. He's getting the steal and getting laid out by Shea Theodore. I should have been more smart. Adam Larson steps up. I'm very much a Cronwell. Oh, ho, ho. Carlson lays the deke. I'm very much a Nicholas Cronwall style. Somebody's hurt. I injured somebody already. Yanni Gord. What a shot. The passing on the Misfits so far is impressive. Giordano steps up. Yeah, I like my defenseman to step up. And that's why I think I like offense. Oh, Adam Larson. Whoa, just as I say stepping up, the computer notices my words and just steps Adam Larson up, takes down Tatar, who's now actually a member of the Montreal Canadiens, actually. Wheel, wheel with the breakaway! Deeks, backhand, not doing it. Flurry is not fooled. Yeah, that trade happened just, I believe, two days ago now at this point? Either yesterday or two days ago. Obviously, the rosters are not going to update that quickly, but... That is probably going to be the first update. McQuaid with the poke check, and we are moving forward. I'm going to actually just take McQuaid on the forehand, backhand, shiver. Fast got in the way, though. Wheel. Guys, lay it out! Oh, oh, oh my goodness! Colin Miller Dumoulin is not going to have any of that. Oh, my goodness. What a hit that was. That is incredible. Crouch block. I'm not going to let that backdoor pass happen. That was an NHL 17's downfall. The backdoor pass could get anybody in any online game. Not so much the case here, though. Oh, man. What? Oh, Reeves. Shoulder shivers. Uh-oh. I've got too many guys in the back of the net. Kincaid takes down Reeves. I love how the goalies are still brick walls. Ryan Reeves would totally deck out Keith Kincaid, but not so much since it's a goaltender situation. They want to protect their goalies in these games, I understand. Holden. Oh, come on, Wilson just got laid out. That was probably Reeves. That was So that was Reeves in the first period, too. That was number 25. Oh, my gosh. The hits in this game are fantastic. The realism of running into players by accident just getting the price paid is fantastic to see. Boone Jenner get that out to Van Riemsdyk, who's going to pass it to the corner of Scott Wilson. I was not expecting that pinch to happen. That was a bad pass. Manning, can you deck? No, you cannot. Now Van Riemsdyk is out of position. Luckily, Kincaid was able to get the ba Oh, bad pass. Goudreau, though, to Wilson. Dump that out. Get that fourth line out there. Let's see what this fourth line can do. Marty Hansel, get in McNabb. Out of the back of the numbers, that should have probably been a penalty. But it wasn't, and gameplay goes on. Why is Reeves back on the ice? The man is just always out there. He's going to have the most ice time logged of any Vegas Golden Knight tonight. Kincaid steps up with the big save, though. Got to have that support game. Support game strong. One second left in the period. Oh! Manning just gets laid out to end the period. What a hit that was. <laughs> they saw me going up with no time left. They said, I'm not letting that happen. 
Bacanis against Carlson. That's such a mismatch. Bacanis is not a first-line center on any team, except the Milwaukee Misfits. <laughs> Gets laid out, but that's okay because Marjorie's helmet falls off as well in response to that hit. Jared Dow stepping up on Shane Mitchell, and they both go, and it's just a dog pile. Oh, man, the, the hitting physics in this game, I think, are vastly improved, and I thought that they are pretty good in 18 as well. I'm not going to lie. Yanni Gordon. Oh, <laughs> gets hit. Larson is, why are you stepping up so much, Larson? Oh, that's not where the arrow was pointing that you would throw to. Mark Giordano, though, puts whoever that was into the boards. I'm, I need to work on my color gameplay. You guys are going to see that development as I build this series forward. My color commentary is going to improve so, so much. Bacanis, get that stick, that defensive skill stick. Get on the defensive side of this. Oh, I did not see Hala in the middle there. Oh, Tatar. I was trying to put the hit down, but I missed pretty badly, actually. Yes, now we go. Now we go. Breaking out. Oh, okay. So that's good defensiveness. By Bray McNabb, former LA. Kane Schmidt to Marsha. So with the shot, Keith Kincaid has been just unstoppable this evening. It's fantastic to see. Kelly Yarncrook, broken stick. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing, Kelly? Get off the ice. McQuaid steps up. Oh, puts the big hit on. Dumoulin with the big hit on. I should not have done that. I have to pay attention, actually play the game like NHL players would play the game. I can't just let things like that happen because the puck goes in the back of the net every single time, and I can't let that happen. Oh, I was hoping to get Ryan Reeves, and then I noticed it was Ryan Reeves. So it's 75, not 25. Why did I keep saying 25? It looked like 25. Who is 25? Because 25 is also on the ice, and I feel like that was the first period hit that I saw. Oh, Ryan Reeves thinking he can get that shot off. Oh, oh my gosh, he just lays out Dumoulin. Oh, my goodness gracious. The realism of having a player like Reeves on the ice is noticed, and I like that. I like that a lot. That makes the feel of this game so much better, and I hope that that carries over into... Oh, my gosh, that was Stasny with the hit. I hope that that carries over into Hut as well. We'll have to see. I'll dive into that mode as well later on this evening. But I like it so far in just franchise simulation. I think Kelly was going for a line change. What a giveaway to Ryan Reeves, who cannot put the puck in the back of the net. He did it a lot in the playoffs, more so than anybody anticipated, I think. Kelly, you're supposed to go for a line change, I think. Let's bring that third line on. Oh, my goodness. Wheel. Van Riemsdyk didn't get the pass to him. Boone Jenner, what are you doing covering for D? Let's go back on that offense. Pyatt. Manning. Wilson, you got to step back, Wilson. You saw that Manning was going to pinch. You got to be there to step back a step. Just a step with that. Oh, there it is. Oh, I was going to send Jenner, but Jenner didn't want to go. Oh, he pays the price, though. Leaves the wide open for Pyatt, who cannot put it in the back of the net. Boone Jenner, Giordano on Tuck. Tuck does not want any of that. He just backs away. Van Reems, like, late hit. That could have been penalized, but it was not. I'm okay with that, obviously. And, oh, my gosh, I'm just giving it up like ice cream. Those that played backyard basketball. Chuck was it? Oh, man. No, Chuck down play was football, right? I don't know. I don't remember my backyard sports references. They need to make more of those games, though. That's all I got to say. Leaves the... Oh, I tried to look him away. What is 20 doing getting in the way? Is that Boone Jenner? What is he doing trying to bull rush the goaltender when he's got it in his glove? We have a 1-1 tie going into the last minute of the third period. A big win by Buchanan. Yanni Gord, why did I pass it against the boards? We'll see. Maybe it'll be a good option. Giordano cannot put the puck on the stick and shoot it. That's not good. Because now the Vegas Golden Knights have a big rush to end the period. Silverberg needs to be the hero. Buchanan, no, don't march yourself. Oh, that was too close for my liking. Intercepted pass. And that is the end of regulation with a tied score of 1-1. to -one. If I didn't play like an idiot, Tuck would have never put the buck in the back of the net, and I would have potentially won this game. But two overtime we go, no less. Silverberg, oh, Pekanitz, you are so offside, it's gross. But Silverberg with, oh, I was hoping to get a hit on. Oh, my goodness gracious. Now you've got Giordano, oh, big stick defensively right there. That was huge, that 
could have potentially probably just saved the game. We'll see what we can do with our three on three skills here. Serverberg with the pass. Oh, what an intercepted pass. That was a good play. That was actually a really good play. Breaking out now, Wheel. Why is Wheel on my three on three? Giordano needs to get the hit on. Puts a big hit onto Marsha. So I like Wheel's speed, actually. It's pretty good. He wants to get out there. Adam Larson. Oh, tries to go glove side on Flurry, and Flurry just does not take it. He gets it in the glove every single time. I was hoping to look away and get that upper post, but I was not able to put it home. I, I'm going to just slap shot and hope that it doesn't backfire like it did. I'm going to get a big hit, though, with Larson. I like that. I like that a lot. Play reserved. Can I? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes. Oh, man. I was hoping to deke and oh, no. Thank you, Keith Kincaid, for being a stud monster tonight. I should not have done that. Thank you, Nate Schmidt, for being bad with your hands. That probably was actually a good move, though. Fooled, fooled me. It would have definitely fooled me. Come on, Gord! That was a bad angle shot. I should not have made that shot. Boy, you might see a shootout in game one with the Milwaukee Misfits, you guys. This might be interesting. And obviously, I'm not going to be playing every single game. I am very much a simulation guy. But I like seeing what happens. I like playing the team, acclimating myself with the players, getting a few favorites here and there. You never know what you're going to run into. You might like somebody's play. You might have a goaltender like I've had in many NHL 18 franchises that let in five goals on six shots in the first game as an exact elite goaltender. I'm looking at you, Gibson, and I trade him the next day because that's just ridiculous. And they were not necessarily strong shots either. Passes it to the corner, Silverberg. Pacanitz, I need you to go to some space. Oh, man, Larson. Or that was Giordano. I'm sorry. I thought that was Larson. Ken Silverberg, though. Big pass to... Oh, Pacanitz. Pacanitz, you got to be there. You just got to be there. Giordano, yes! We have an OT winner. Giordano puts it home. I did not anticipate that to go in, but that is it. Keith Kincaid, a well-deserving first star of the game. What a game we just witnessed. The Milwaukee Misfits take game one in overtime in franchise history against the Vegas Golden Knights. So that is going to wrap it up for episode one of NHL 19 Franchise Mode with the Milwaukee Misfits. Let me know what you guys think moving forward. What do you think about my selections as the, uh, as the expansion draft went on, as the actual draft went on? Like I said, I'm not used to this... Uh, different fog of war style but i want to play it through on this franchise and i want to see what these new features look like so far the team's doing very well i think that we've got a very good team i don't like kelly on the left side especially since he shoots right and we have only right shots on the second wing so maybe we bring pie it up and let wheel develop a little bit more on that third line like his role indicates and work it that way but let me know what you guys suggest in the comments below. Thank you so much for being a part of this franchise from day one. You guys are with this franchise from day one. The Milwaukee Misfits are going to do great things in the future.